you're gonna have to be very very strategic in times like this because people are going to be very careful with their money what happens is uh, the reason why gdp falls is because people are spending way less people are spending way less on you know just consumer goods they're only going to be spending money on things that they need which leads me to tip number one right you want to find types of products that are not that are not so much trendy products right like you could get away with the whole um you could get away with just selling products that that look good products that are trendy um products that are cool and quirky and i used to advise for that but at least for this next six months i would say i would focus on uh i would focus on actually selling products that have an extreme utility benefit right something that people are absolutely going to need or if you can create a selling point that the product that they're going to be getting is a product that um how do i put this is a product that's going to help them economically right something that's going to save them money that's going to be a huge selling point and you want to use that throughout your copywriting on your websites all right so keep that in mind um we could do you know we'll actually do that in the next the next live we'll, we'll go over some uh products like top 10 products during a recession or something like that but uh i would definitely do like um you know not not so much uh like products that look good or products that are cool cute and quirky i would go with products that have an extreme utility benefit that'll be the very first thing now another thing i would mention is uh you know because a big portion of your success is going to depend on what type of product you have i would actually suggest um you know i would actually suggest selling low ticket products i've sold both low ticket i've sold both high ticket if you guys don't know what i mean by low ticket basically products priced under 30 dollars. okay where uh, the consumer doesn't have to think too much about their their buying decision okay think about it if you're being very if you're going through a phase where you're trying to save as much money as possible the last thing you're going to want to do is to buy a product that is of no use to you economically and saving you money and on top of that it's very expensive okay so we need to kind of we need to be smart about what kind of products we're selling here and you know it goes content is a big deal i'm going to talk about what kind of content strategy you're going to need here in a second but um definitely definitely you want to you want to um make sure that that the product is low ticket that's going to ease their mind during the buying process they're not going to be um you know they're not going to think about it they're not going to have to go to talk about it with their family and their wife right you know because most people in you know most households do that before a big purchase decision anything over 50 dollars really psychologically they're gonna they're gonna hesitate to buy that product so you definitely want to make sure that um it's price it's a product that's priced enough to where you have healthy margins but on top of that you want to make sure that it's something that um it's like a no-brainer purchase right and then if you can on top of that sell the 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 selling point of okay this economically going to save you money in the future like let's say uh i'm just making up a product right now but let's say it's a, a plug outlet or something like that save money on your electricity bill right this this um this uh solar plug socket will save you x amount of dollars that's the type of selling point that you want to have uh amg says name a few place i think you mean uh name a few products please uh, uh, let me know what you mean by that but ultimately that's that's kind of the mindset that i would i would embody um during this recession okay i think we pretty much have about we have until the end of this christmas season to kind of play around you know you can sell as many whatever kind of products you want right now but after december and after this christmas you're gonna have to be really really selective about what products you're gonna actually um put out there and promote 
okay welcome in y'all if you're just tuning in uh hit up the chat section if you have any questions right now we're just talking about what products you want to have during the recession and how to combat um you know consumers just being very selective with their with their uh money all right and why should they buy from you okay this is another thing make sure that your product has reviews right you want to make sure that your product is doing most of the selling for you you shouldn't have to, obviously we're going to play into our favor but you, you, the product and the social proof should do most of the selling for you so don't sell this is not the time to take a chance on products that you've seen um there's there's barely any sales on it there's barely any reviews and you want to take the chance because you want you want to be the first one with that product in the market i would suggest to um, make sure that that the product is proven to sell okay you want to make sure it has a good amount of reviews you know obviously you don't want it to be a saturated product but make sure that it has a good amount of reviews so that that eases the all of these things ease the person's mind when it comes to making that that purchase decision okay and i, I used to have this this list too it's called 16 reasons why customers buy all right and <clears throat> amg i got you in a few um they, they used, i used to have this list it's called 16 reasons why people buy let me see if i can find it 16 see if we can get that all right so this is this is basically a, a thing right here let me share this with you guys all right this is this is a, a little worksheet that i used to give to students um, people working with me and i used to tell them hey um don't sell a product unless it's doing one of these things right 16 reasons why people buy and this is on top of having the the social proof on top of having you know um all those right indicators that we talked about just now in place this is what's going to sell your product ultimately these are these are why people mainly buy products to prove something wrong right that gives you a sense of fulfillment your ego you know satisfies people's ego all right to feel superior to be more attractive to prevent being cheated on to feel more intelligent to make someone proud to gain someone's respect to provide a better life for someone this usually falls in the category of people who have children or who have a family and they want to provide a better life for their family all right so um that that imaginary plug socket that we was talking about that's that uh, you know it's like a solar plug socket you know it, it serves the benefit of providing a better life for someone because they're gonna there's good they're gonna get a lot of utility out of it at home but on top of that they're also going to be able to save money economically right so you can it doesn't have to just be one of these things as well it could be a mixture of them okay um there's also to protect someone to feel part of a group to get something they deserve to gain hope and strength to gain positive vibes this is going to be a good these two right here are going to be good selling points too to uh, uh to gain hope and strength and to gain positive vibes those are going to be very um good because this goes back to the you know during the recession people like to indulge in entertainment you know purchases for for drugs and alcohol go up um entertainment spending goes up so the the purpose of that is to gain positive vibes that's that's the thing you know you you definitely want to lean into these type of things so i remember for example amg to answer your question there used to be a um there used to be this product it was like a projector it was like a screen projector and you could um play movies on the ceiling or whatever i i don't see that you know dying during a recession i think that product will do well during a recession you, you know um also another tip here you guys m might want to consider products that have done well in the past and just repurpose them and, and bring them to a new platform like TikTok. All right. So um, th there's a lot of things that we could do to play around with that. <clears throat> uh, let's see. 
just for a minute so I could come back to you talking about December and stuff. Uh, I guess that I aforementioned hesitancy would probably disappear during these times, such as Black Friday, Christmas, concepts of sale in mind. Was that kind of what you're, yeah, that's exactly what I was getting at. So, you know, um, you know, during Black Friday, it's going to be a very big time because people, are, they're going to see that as the best time to get their last sort of, um, get the last deals off the table, right? To get the last best deals off of the shelf. So Black Friday, Christmas, those are always going to be best times on, you know, recession or not. Even though people do say they plan to spend less this this quarter, um, there's been a couple polls showing that. I, you know, ultimately people are, it doesn't mean that people are just going to stop spending altogether. They're just going to stop. They're going to be more mindful about what they spend. Okay. And these are the things that we can do to combat that. All right. So let me go back to this list of, of the 16 reasons. Um, the last three here to fulfill a guilty pleasure. Okay. To gain control over someone or to solve the mystery. Okay, these are all reasons why somebody are, are going to make a purchase. And if you can double down on these or even add a mixture of these and juggle them, um, I don't think you're going to have a problem selling any products online um, during the recession. But ultimately, let's just look at the big picture. Okay, people who are actually going out into the workforce, yes, they're going to be getting laid off. You know, people working brick and mortar jobs, it's going to be less foot traffic into brick and mortar stores. But, uh, you know, ultimately, we are in the online space people are you know this is such a this is such an ingrained part of our lives now that people are always going to be able to go online people are going to cut back on all types of spending but they still going to pay that internet bill you know because they they want to be in touch with everybody so i would actually argue that there's going to be even more eyeballs online than before all right um do me a favor y'all do me a favor money mafia check in with me hit that like on this video if you're getting some value so far i want to talk about two other things yeah we talked about selling products with, with good reviews already now another thing you want to be very careful and this is to combat zuckerberg your boy zuck over there firing eleven thousand employees this is what you want to do as a drop shipper don't spend money on ads until you absolutely have to okay you want to maximize your profit and the only way you're going to do that is by minimizing your ad spend you might be asking yo mo if i minimize my ad spend how am i going to get traffic how am i going to get sales you're going to have to use these next two months to double down on content okay and you guys are going to keep hearing me say this uh, yeah you know you're going to keep hearing me talk about content as long as something has social proof and it has enough views it have enough uh, credibility and other people are raving about it you will get traffic and then it's really just going to be up to you to turn that traffic into buyers okay so definitely um double down on content i would actually use the strategy of you know making one piece of content every single day make one 15 to 20 second video on tiktok for example every single day and then um, towards the end of those 30 days, you know, you're going to have 30 videos on that platform. One of them are going to perform better than the other. That's the video that you want to take and you want to double down on. Now, instead of optimizing for conversions, right, this is big right here. This is going to be, this is my fourth tip for you guys, Money Mafia. Instead of double, instead of optimizing for conversions, you want to optimize for engagement. I know that sounds weird, you know, because everybody thinks you have to I, you have to choose uh, the purchase conversion pixels in order to get sales. That's false. OK, that's just putting you in front of the, the people who are more likely to buy. But because people's buying behaviors are going to change, the it's not going to be as effective, if that makes sense. Right. Because the algorithm is going off past data. It's not going off what's about to come. So you want to. um if you do decide to advertise, first of all, focus on organic content. But if you do decide to advertise, you you want to optimize for engagement, optimize for social proof, especially on TikTok. Um, the thing with TikTok is 
I've actually experienced more conversions on certain ad sets where I'm, I'm just optimizing for video views and engagement and comments. Because what happens is comments is what, it's like a snowball there. Comments is what gets people to, um, it's getting you social proof, right? So on a human element, you're getting the social proof that you need. But then on the algorithm side of things, when people go to comment, they're spending longer time on that, that piece of content. And we all know that these algorithms, they favor watch time. Right. So it, it, watch time is I, that's kind of like the wrong word to use because it's not it doesn't mean that they're watching it necessarily. It just means that they're engaging with it in some way. So if somebody's going to comment on the video and they spend, you know, let's say they spend a minute just just to type something to comment on there, that's all going to count towards your watch time. OK, so. Uh, again, bait people with with some type of engagement. Bait people with with um, with some something that's going on in the background. People love to like point out the odd thing in the video, right? Just study what the comments are in, in some of these top TikToks, and you'll see exactly how uh, you know how to bait people to just comment ridiculous things. Like for example, I was selling this product. And I got it right here. It's on the door. It's like the, the fingerprint door handle. And the door handle, it, it was, um, as I was installing it, I was making a video as I was installing it. And then the door itself was very dirty. It had a bunch of fingerprints. Instead of wiping the door down beforehand, I told myself, you know what? I'm just, I'm gonna just leave it. Cause I know people are going to say something about it in the comments. And lo and behold, when I went to post the video, people wasn't even talking about the product. They was talking about the 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 um. They was talking about the uh, door being so dirty. They was like, "Oh, wipe down your door, blah blah blah." blah. And then that video ended up having like a hundred k views. Like within the first, what was it? it? Was like the first three or four days or something like that. The first week for sure, it had about fifty k views. And then I said, you know what? Okay, this is this is getting engagement. There's gonna be a portion of people that that watch the video um, simply for the product, and there's gonna be a portion of the video uh, uh, people that watch the video just to say something, right? Just to you know be the smartass. So figure out ways you can um, bait people into into engaging with your comment or, or engaging with your content because that's what's going to increase the watch time. It's little things like that that. The algorithm doesn't really tell you that, right? They just measuring watch time. But what's going on to make that watch time happen is a lot of things. People sharing the video, people um, watching it just so they can see that one piece of that one clip back, right? So they might watch it 10 times just to watch one piece of that video. Um, but uh, ultimately, if, you know, if I had to boil this down into just one big point, focus on organic content. Don't go spending money on ads. And if you do spend money on ads, it better be for engagement and not for purchase conversions. Because I don't think, um, I honestly don't think that optimizing for purchases is going to be that different from optimizing for um, engagement. The only difference is going to be that you're going to be spending more money on the purchase conversion. You're going to be spending more money on that pixel and that optimization. All right. <clears throat> so uh definitely test organic before you you have any ad spend don't go spending money that's what a lot of the number one reason why drop shippers fail is because they go and they spend a whole bunch of money on ads on a product and a piece of content that that hasn't been proven to work that has and I, i'm not gonna lie i did this too i did this too and you know but i did it in a time where you could do it and get away with it you know during you know like that on facebook instagram you could just make an ad and then say all right this ad works and because you're biased you want it to work you're telling yourself that it's going to work but um it hasn't been proven yet okay so the great thing about TikTok nowadays is that we can go and prove the content first we could go and just play the organic game for a month and i know a lot of people don't have the patience to do that a lot of people don't have the patience to just make one video every day not spend money on ads not expect any sales even though you're going to get sales most people don't have the patience to do that so if you can overcome it there's going to be one more thing that sets you apart from those eleven thousand employees that get fired and they they want to go start a drop shipping business 
they don't notice they're trying to come in and just make fast money what you should do is you should play the long-term game play the content game and let the let the data tell you where to go 